So good morning. Today we have a 2004 Honda Civic. I believe it has the 1.7 engine in it. And the complaint is that it's overcharging. Right now, key off. All right, actually the key's in the on position. The battery voltage is sitting at 12.62 volts. There were no warning lights on when I drove it in this morning. But the customer has determined that it's overcharging. I'm going to start it. Definitely overcharging. He said he noticed the lights were flashing. 18.3, 18.4, and going up. So we'll have a look at what causes that. I know the computer controls the charging system on this, but I'm wondering if it could be a ground problem. See, this ground wire looks pretty sketchy. Let's have a look, see the lights flickering. Eighteen and a half volts. Now this ground cable is pretty compromised. And this battery positive cable, I don't like these, these type of universal cable clamps. They are a problem waiting to happen. That alternator is pretty hot, but we we'll stand to reason if it's overcharging like that. Well, let's see what's common to cause this. So, looking at cases on Identifix, overcharging 17 volts. Most of the time, it's the alternator. Yeah, most of the time, it looks like the alternator, but I'm not convinced. Let's have a look at the wiring diagram. I think I bookmarked the schematic. See if there's a voltage sensing wire to the alternator. This is the electrical OE diagram. Alternator control signal, field regulator signal, alternator light signal. The light is not on. Well, it's not under charging. So it's obvious that the ECM monitors the voltage because there's no voltage sensing wire. There's ignition feed wire to the alternator and the output wire, which is obviously working because it's charging. I think we better put the scanner on it and scan it for codes. So we're going to go into the ECM and see what codes it has in it. Permanent codes, nothing. Temporary codes, nothing. Well, let's have a look at the data list and see if we can see system voltage according to the PCM or ECM. According to the scan tool, it's 11.7 .7 at the DLC. Mm, battery voltage, 11.9. So let's start it up and see what happens. Well, as you can see, it's climbing to 17. Spike down to 14 there for a fraction of the, the, the voltmeter was doing that on the battery. Alternator control desired at 14.5 and the actual voltage is 18.3 and climbing. So we're going to put an alternator on this thing. Well, I decided to check voltage drop on the ground just in case. And even with that sketchy ground cable, it's still at less than 0.1 on the negative. So between the negative battery post and the cylinder head bracket there. I guess I should go right to the alternator. So disconnect the negative battery post. We're going to fix this battery cable after in this ground. Uh, you need to take the bracket off for the support for the AC compressor pipe. And one of the nuts or bolts broke off. I'll have to deal with that after. Uh, we need to move this power steering out of the way, power steering pump. But this whole rad support is pushed back about half an inch. You can see the uh, shroud has been doctored so that it doesn't touch the alternator. 
is going to make it interesting to get this alternator out of here, I think. Oh well. Carry on. So once you take the power steering pump out of the way and the, the reservoir and set it off to the side like that, and the uh, tensioner bolts, the alternator does come out of there. It's a little challenging. I have to take this adjuster out and clean it up, free it up. Looks like there's one pivot. I'll take that off. Anyways, there was a nut on the bottom of this. No, that was threaded hole. I have to take this little bracket off. All right, let's clean up everything and get ready to put the new alternator on. So this is the replacement alternator I'm putting on. And we're going to compare the replacement one with the original. Well, the two alternators look the same. Same electrical orientation, same plugs, location of the terminals in the same spot. I've taken this little bracket off of here that's for the wiring harness, so we'll have to transfer that to the new alternator. Yeah, that's it. Let's clean up the pivots and put it back on. So there it is, back together and running. 14.55 volts, nice flat line. Let's look at the alternator diode ripple. Beautiful. Now I still am going to fix this ground cable here. Although it's not causing a problem, it will be a problem shortly. That's the ground for probably the body. So anything that's attached to the body, headlights, heater fan, instrumentation and such. So I made a new ground cable. It's heavier than it needs to be. It's a piece of fused battery cable with a couple of copper lugs and I put a marine connector on this positive post and soldered two cable eyelets heat shrunk them even the factory ones not sealed but nevertheless that's better than uh, than those universal cable clamps even though this is another form of universal one I think this job will last a little longer so that's a wrap Charging system is working fine now. I'm not sure if the radio is locked. We'll see.